Hey, welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl Temple. Well, I've not seen you for ages, have I? And um, it's because I've got some sad news. Um, you may know this if you follow me on Instagram, but uh, as you may know, a couple of videos ago, I mentioned that my mum was very poorly. And sadly, um, a few weeks ago, she passed away at the end of February. So I've been totally consumed with that obviously and planning the funeral and all the awful things that follow when you don't really want to be that busy and um, she lived on her own so we've had her flat to sort out and all that kind of thing so forgive me for being away for so long it's been quite difficult to be honest and um, if you've lost a parent then you've probably got some idea of what I've been through for the last few weeks so thanks for bearing with me and for everybody who sent me such wonderful messages I really do appreciate it. it it made me feel a little bit less alone going through it at the time so thank you and um, slightly related to that um, I um, planned my mum's funeral and the actual wake and as a result I invited everybody to come wearing something bright if they wanted to and um, you can see next to me this is what I made and wall. Um, it was a total complete last minute decision. Um, I wanted to make something for the day and um, it was a lovely suggestion from Alice and Goddard. Thanks Ali. Um, she made her own dress uh, for her, her uh, dad's funeral. So I thought what a lovely idea and it really helped me focus and do something pleasurable um, when it was all consuming at the time. So I made um, a, an Eve dress from Sew Over It. Now, I, I didn't want to start a new pattern. I didn't want any learnings. I didn't want to go wrong. And I actually made this the day before, of, the, day before the funeral, <laughs> which was completely mad to do. I think I, I cut out the pattern a couple of days before, but I actually sewed it the day before. Now, if you remember, I had I saved this fabric. Um, I had this for ages. I bought it for the shop and then I kept a little bit back. And it's totally gone now. You can't get it for love nor money. My suppliers aren't bringing it back. So if you find anywhere that sells it, do support another indie pattern um, seller, not pattern seller, fabric seller, um, and buy from them um, because it's absolutely beautiful. It's a viscose fabric. It's really soft, really drapey, and I wanted something that I could wear again um, because I'm practical <laughs> that way. So I made this um, for that day and also to wear on my holidays because it's a really nice, cool fabric to wear when it's warm. So I made this, it's a size 14, which I have, I've made them, I've made a few versions, I'll, I'll pop a link in the description to my other reviews on my proper review of this pattern. And it really suits me uh, and I like the fact that it's a wrap and you can alter the size of it so if your weight goes up and down like mine does then you can still get a good fitting dress. Um, which is quite handy isn't it if you don't wear dresses every day like I don't I'm usually in jeans and t-shirt then it's handy to have something that will last for long uh, much longer so yeah I, I'm really pleased with it it was a a nice day as far as those things go and and I'm pleased that I can look at this and and have happy happy memories um, about my mum so there you go. Enough of the sad part. I promised you I'd review the Sapporo coat and that, my friends, is what I'm going to do next. Before I go on, I should mention my hair. <laughs> You're probably thinking, blimey Cheryl, <laughs> you've let yourself go a bit, haven't you? So I'm, I've decided to grow out my grey hair. So I'm completely white at the roots, pretty much, on top anyway. Um, it's a bit it's not at the bottom so that's going to be interesting and um, I was having to color my hair every two weeks which I think is ridiculous I used to do it myself at home with a home hair dye uh, and then of course I'd have it done at the hairdressers now and again but it's all money and expense isn't it and it's not good for you it can't be good to put that much dye on your hair every two weeks so I've decided to embrace my natural greys so as you can see it's really quite white, look. 
And um, I didn't realise until I started searching around on Instagram that it's a bit of a thing. There are lots of us doing it apparently. So I, um, I follow hashtags like Silver Sisters and Ditch the Die and all that kind of thing. So if you're interested in following my progress and have, <laughs> having a good chuckle at where my demarcation line comes out further and further, then I've set up my own personal Instagram, nothing to do with Stitchy Bee and Fabric, it's just about me. And it's Shelley Temps, C-H-E-L-L-Y-T-E-M-P-S, uh, at Shelley Temps, if you wanted to follow me, that is. So yeah, <laughs> just to warn you, because it looks very odd, doesn't it, without knowing. Um, but there's loads of groups on Facebook and Instagram, and it's fantastic. Uh, going Grey Gracefully is a good one on um, Facebook. And there are lots of us, lots of lots of ladies in America mostly, um, and then uh, some of us Brits have joined the the movement as well. So it's good fun anyway. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. I reckon it'll take about eighteen months to come through to a good enough length where I can have it cut off a little bit. But I don't want to go too short because I still like my curls. So there you go. That's enough about my hair. Right then, on to the Sapporo coat by Paper Cut Patterns. You may know, um, this was on my Make Nine list from for 2018, um, and I've procrastinated with this for ages. You'll know, I keep promising I'll review it, and then it, it never happened. And sometimes that happens with patterns, doesn't it? And I think, because it's a coat, I put it off because the time needed to make it was so much longer than anything else. Obviously, I've um, been struggling to fit that in recently, so, I nailed it this week. Um, I started cutting it out in January and then I left it for a while and then came back to it. So this is it, let's have a look at it first. Now I was going to make a black one if you remember because I really need a black coat and then you guys bought all my black Melton fabric and then I bought some camel Melton fabric and this beautiful, I call, I've called it Red Riding Hood um, Melton. It's not a wool. Sometimes you can get Melton with a wool content, a 50% content usually. This is all polyester. And this has got a slight stretch to it, though you wouldn't know really. Um, I wouldn't class this as a stretch. There is some give it, it on the bias, but um, it has got some um, spandex in it and viscose, so it's really nice and soft. So I've made it in red. I was completely inspired to make it in this colour because one of my lovely followers, Jo Omar, um, on Instagram, made a really similar version with the same fabric and she lined hers with a zebra lining, a black and white zebra print. And I absolutely adored it, it just looked amazing. So that stuck in my head. So I went for a similar effect and lining it in this gorgeous um, leopard print viscose. I've had this for ages. I've got no more for you, I'm afraid. And I've only got a little bit left of the red coat um, because it's, we're a bit out of season now, aren't we? Um, so yeah, sorry about that on the old fabric stakes, but I'll go through suitable fabrics in a minute. And it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Um, it's got these little hidden, not hidden pockets, but they, they're part of the design with the seam line down here. And the back, give you a closer view here. It's got these gorgeous seam lines here down the back. And I think that makes it hang really nicely. And the collar turned out really well. Sometimes with these types of collars, you're never quite sure, but it, it, it's a really well drafted, beautiful pattern. I'll pop it on so you can see how it looks on me and I'll talk through the sizing too. So here you go. It's deliberately oversized and lots of people who make this talk about the sizing of it. I made the extra small and I usually wear a dress size 12 to 14. And you can see there's still plenty of room on it, um, in it for me. So um, I made the second size up. So it goes from, let's see, extra extra small then extra small then small medium large and xl so there's a good range there don't go too tiny because you do need to move in it 
and it's meant to be oversized so bear that in mind and you'll need to think about the fabric that you make it in so this um, Melton is a fairly sturdy thick fabric now with Melton if it's all polyester it will fray so don't use it for raw edges um, it doesn't behave like a wool in that sense but it looks it could look like a wool from afar but you really just need to think about that um, because it's lined I didn't have to worry about the fraying because there aren't any raw edges there so um, other fabrics to make this coating you could obviously choose a boiled wool or a wool um, you could choose some lighter fabrics as well and I've thought about making this in a, a kind of tweedy um, fabric maybe in white I think that would be quite nice I've got a roll of that left um, so that that might be another option I wouldn't say it's the warmest of coats there are no closures on it because I was worried about making it this time of year <laughs> trust me this time last year I made a pair of shorts didn't I and it was snowing <laughs> this time I'm making a coat and it's about we're about to go into spring summer aren't we um, but hey ho it's absolutely fine it's a three-quarter sleeved as well so I wore it yesterday with some long black gloves which makes it look quite smart and if you wear a long sleeve top under it as well then that can add to the look and, and feel so it's a really versatile coat it doesn't fasten so you have to be mindful of that but I really love the lining I'll show you inside there we go and it's got beautiful mitered corners where the lining actually meets so let me talk you through the process that I went through and places where you might mess up I've decided to include this little bit about places where you might mess up in my pattern reviews because I, it, 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 it's obvious to me while I'm going through that this is a place where it might go wrong so it's worth pointing those out I'm sure you won't and it's fine <laughs> if you just ignore that bit but you never know it might save somebody from having to unpick it which is not easy in this fabric so try and avoid unpicking anything and um, when you're sewing anything where the stitches go deep in now I've got my notes here so <clears throat> The first thing that is worth knowing, when you cut out this fabric, it's impossible to know the right side from the wrong side unless you make some sort of mark at the time. So how I did that was, it, I don't think it matters so much with this whether you choose one side or the other, I couldn't tell a difference. But what you want to make sure is that you cut everything out the same way. So that if you're in daylight and you can spot that one sleeve's different to the other it will annoy you forever more won't it so the way I did it was to just I just put a little pin in one side of the fabric and I removed it when I then sewed it up it'll just help you keep all the pattern pieces lined up the same way um, so that's another one also um, you need to be careful when you're sewing this fabric because there's a few layers in parts of this and there are sewing curves as well so firstly you need to make sure that your machine can take it I made all this on my industrial machine because it's still my favorite you know I've got my little faff but I keep that at home um, and I sewed this all on my straight stitch machine however I couldn't because on the sleeve part the way the sleeves are attached you need the arm of a sewing machine to wrap a sleeve round to sew round it all and under stitch it that would be pretty difficult on a flatbed machine like mine a great big industrial one so um, I'm sure most of you use a standard domestic machine that is the best machine really to, to make this on otherwise you'll have to switch over if you've got both great you'll need the arm bit to wrap your sleeve around also um, on the patterns there are parts of the pattern where the actual pocket is shaped where you sew an outward curve onto a, an inwardly shaped curved uh, curve so you just need to pin those bits very carefully because your brain will think that won't match up but it will if you make this you'll kind of know what I'm talking about 
Lots of people asked me for a sew along for this, which I've really not had time to film. However, I have found and made use of an amazing one, and I'll pop a link to it um, in the description below because I had to refer to that um, for the lining attachment because the instruction wasn't obvious for me, so I had to look it up. Um, and then watching someone do it is always easier, isn't it? I learn that way, and I know lots of people do. So if you do want to spot anybody, um, making this up have a look there also on the paper cut patterns own website they have got some diagrams and explanations of some of the stages so there's a collar facing piece which is not that obvious as to how to attach that um, and they explain it there so I'll pop a link below in the description if you scroll right that some people don't realize whether that is if you scroll right down past all the videos and then expand the description box you should see it in there it depends how you watch obviously where it appears on your device but do find that and have a look it will make life a lot easier if you make this um, another tip uh, is the seam allowance is one centimeter throughout um, so that's worth knowing and also uh, accuracy is key so as you can see it, if if you cut this out wrong it, it's gonna bite you and sometimes I'm not always that accurate with my cutting and I think ah, I'll be all right but you've really really got to be bang on with this because if you look things like that seam there down the front it's really obvious if it's out it will be obvious if the collars are different sizes and also it will be obvious if the lining's not straight and the pattern piece for the lining I made this mistake is also the same pattern piece for the back but the lining section here we go has got a, a fold there so when you cut the lining out don't forget unlike me you have to fold it otherwise it'll be too long now in this case that was fine because I just realized and then I cut it off but look out for that part so the coat lining should be the same um, uh, it should be evenly all across when you attach it to the coat and that's the most fiddly part I'd say the actual coat part is fairly simple um, one thing I did use is my pressing cloth when you're pressing this polyester melton, it will burn on the iron if you get it slightly too hot, it'll just go. So do use a pressing cloth. I use a silk organza one. I was had a moment of madness one day a couple of years ago and I ordered a metre of silk organza. I think it's about 18 pounds a metre, but you can find it on eBay. Um, but it's worth it because you can actually see through that fabric and it won't burn with the iron. I'll show you a little section of mine. This is silk organza. You can use it to um, interline things like suits and skirts. When you're making something special, you'd use this for interlining. Um, this is just a little square. It's not even cut straight, is it? But I just lopped a bit off because my main one's at home. Uh, and it, it saves the day because you can see through it, you can see the seams that you're pressing open and it's quite important for this because it's so crisp and the style of it needs to be right. Um, I definitely use this and I hardly ever use this on any other makes other than jacket making ones but yeah you, you'll need something like that. If you don't have silk organza and you think it's ridiculously expensive, which it is really, um, then use uh, a muslin cloth or some lightweight cotton that you've probably got in your stash. If you can see through it, all the better, but just test it with the iron first. So yeah, I love this. It's really nice. It's a bit of a statement piece, isn't it, in this bright red, but it, it's perfect to throw on over a white t-shirt and pair of jeans, and then it just transforms your outfit, doesn't it, if you want to be casual for when you're not wearing your coat. Um, I don't think it's particularly difficult but the lining is fiddly and you really need to watch the tutorial um, online. Let me go and have a look because I feel awful I've not, not said the vlogger's name. Let me go and make sure I can name the channel for you and then um, you can go and see how she does it. Okay, the YouTube channel is Jessely Handmade and it's Sophia who presents that channel. She's amazing, go and have a look. She's got all sorts of tutorials and tips and tricks and how-tos. 
So thank you, Sophia. It was a lifesaver and it made life a lot easier. Sometimes your brain hurts, doesn't it, trying to work out instructions. So I hope that's helped. I really enjoyed making this and it was worth it in the end. I decided to put aside a couple of hours each day to work on it. Sometimes it gets a bit all consuming if you do it all at once or try to. And I've, I've managed to do it this week while still doing everything else. So good luck with yours. I know lots of you have got it on your to-do lists. So thank you very much for watching this week. I'm sorry it was a bit sad at the beginning, but thanks for all your kind words and your, your lovely support. I really appreciate it. Next time, I'm gonna be back making my shower caps that I promised you. A bit random, I know, um, but I love making them and I need a few more myself and I'll show you how to do those. There's some good tips on attaching bias binding, which is, a really good reason to watch even if you've never worn a shower cap and never will um, then it's worth watching to look at how a bias binding folder works on a sewing machine it will save you hours and lots of frustration because I find bias binding really difficult to attach the way they show in the books and because I used to make hundreds of shower caps I'm really pleased I found this way to do it so I'll share that with you and we'll get some good close-ups in there so you can see how it works Thanks again. You take care. Bye for now.